All right. Hello, hello. Looks like we're live. Cool. Hey. Um, hi, everyone. Happy Wellness Wednesday. Uh, super excited to be here with you all. Um, Chris is having some technical difficulties. The power went out, so he's uh, <laughs> on his hot spot. So hopefully uh, <laughs> we can... Uh, figure this out and we'll be able to see and hear him clearly soon. But for those of you who don't know, I am one of the admins here in this group. My name is Brittany. I own Fresh and Fit Nutrition. I am a holistic nutritionist who focuses on gut health and autoimmunity. And Chris, my partner here, the other admin of this amazing community, uh, is a uh, holistic uh, health coach as well. And we wanted to talk to you all today about the importance of that holistic uh, care and holistic support when it comes to your health journey. So if you're here with us live, do us a favor, drop us a like, say hello, give us hashtag live if you're watching the replay, uh, hashtag replay, that way this boosts in the algorithm for everyone else um, and it can become visible. Hey, Rivka, how are you? Awesome. Cool. Good to see you here. Cool. Okay, Chris, you're, I think you're better out now that you're outside. Hopefully that. Uh, awesome. Hopefully that works. So. Glad you can hear me. I can hear you. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, yeah, guys, so we just really, you know, this group is holistic health and wellness. Um, so, you know, holistic is an aspect where, you know, you're not just focusing on your physical health, but you're also focusing on mental health, emotional health, and spiritual health as well, because we are holistic beings. We have, you know, emotions, we have things that can, you know, affect, um, the things that we do when we're trying to have a, you know, a physical health journey, right? It may start out, we're having physical symptoms, um, you know, we want to heal our gut or we want to lose weight or things like that, but then we need to address um, the other aspects of health as well, um, because those are also important and those can lead to better success when we're able to, you know, manage that mental health, um, when we're, better able to manage that emotional health, kind of understand why maybe we have these issues with, you know, emotional eating or binge eating or just a poor relationship with food or dealing with stress and anxiety. So it's really important to focus on the whole person. Absolutely. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're a little, you're a little cut, cutting out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll do our best. And I, you did a great job with the introduction, and hopefully everyone who can hear me as best as possible. But at a certain point, uh, it can kind of, uh, with regard to our connection between between our emotions and our physical and emotional health, it's almost like the chicken or the egg. Does the stress cause the uh, disease, disturbance in the body, or does the disturbance in the body cause the stress? It can go both ways. I recently put up a post about the connection between our gut health and our emotional and mental health. And one of the key points there was uh, stress from childhood, uh, childhood adverse, adverse events, where it could be uh, adult adverse events. So we're not here to diagnose and say, say that this trauma caused X, Y, Z, but it all plays together. It seriously does. And that's, I can't emphasize, emphasize it enough to listen to your body when you're in different situations, what situations are going to turn you on emotionally? I'm just saying, turn you on, get you excited, be happy, joyous. And then which situations are going to turn you off? <laughs> just to use that to express them too. I've been in family situations where my body shuts down. I'm admitted straight for today, tomorrow, next day, next day. So it's really important to notice how, uh, how your environment affects you. Uh, if you work at a job that stresses you the hell out, just to say that that much, your boss stresses you out, your coworkers do, it's going to have a similar effect. You're not going to, we're not going to digest foods properly because we're stressed out. We're in a fight or flight state. We're not arresting that arrest and digest. So we really are a whole person. And that's why as holistic uh, health professionals, Brittany as a holistic nutritionist, me as a holistic health coach, we sort of support the whole person and not just give you a menu of foods to eat and send you on your way. That's only gonna do so good. 
if you're stressed out, you can't get yourself off the couch. Those food, that menu of foods, it's only going to do so good. So it's really important to look at the whole pro, whole approach. Uh, it, did you experience a stressful event? You know, did you go through a breakup? I'm just saying, you know, breakup could be, it could even be a job breakup. If you lose a job, you lose your job. That's a, somewhat of a breakup. So that could affect you. Uh, did you lose a family member? Uh, was a stressful event in the family that caused X, Y, Z reaction? And to kind of go back to that and see what you can do to manage your emotional health just as much as the physical health. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when I when I first started coaching, I really focused on, um, you know, more weight loss and fitness aspect of it. And the more and more people I started coaching, I kind of realized like, what's the missing piece here? Like, why aren't these people able to sustain these results? Why are they like backsliding? Why, you know, will they like follow this, this diet or this meal plan and then just go crazy and binge on food or, you know, why can't they stay consistent? And the more and more people I worked with, I started to realize, you know, there's this mental and emotional aspect that needed to be addressed for these people to get to true healing, to get to reach their results, to be able to truly sustain this type of lifestyle because they keep considering themselves like, you know, say they lost 30 pounds while they still consider themselves, you know, an overweight person who lost weight instead of identifying as this new person. And so, you know, there's some mental blocks, there's some emotional things that contribute to this. So addressing those is super important. That's when I started, you know, diving deeper and it it helped it, you know, through my own journey, because I realized that too, when I first started my health journey, it was about being skinny, right? Like I just, I wanted to be skinny. I wanted to look hot. And then as, you know, I started to grow and, you know, just dive into personal development and really, you know, start working on healing things like old traumas and getting rid of limiting beliefs and things like that, I started to realize like, oh, this is why people backslide. This is why when like people go on diets, they say like up to about 85% of people regain the weight back within five years. Um, and, and even gain more weight back. And that's because, you know, you can give someone a diet and a meal plan and they can follow it for a while, but if they're not addressing like the thoughts and the behaviors and why they have these behaviors going on in their head, they're not going to be able to make these changes long-term. And so that's where holistic, you know, coaching comes in because we really work to address these things. We really work on, you know, improving your mindset, really diving deep into the feelings of, you know, why you have these behaviors, what created this, you know, um, action, like why, why do you binge on food? Why do you, you know, like always go back to old behaviors? So it's a matter of, you know, addressing these things and whether that's old traumas, whether that's, you know, um, maybe someone calling you fat when you were young. And then, so you like always identify with that. So it's really important, um, you know, to address the entire person, uh, when it comes to, you know, on your health journey. Um, and that's where holistic coaching can really be a benefit because it's so much more than just diet and exercise. A, a menu. We're not going to give you a menu in general way. Yeah. And a, you mentioned, you know, staying on your path, do, losing weight and getting it back. I'm sure you might know this uh, statistic more than I do specifically, but New Year's resolutions only last till about Valentine's Day, about six weeks then or so. Within that range, it might be five weeks or so, but this, this concept remains. And this goes back to kind of business goals as well as health goals. Uh, in order for us to grow for our business, we need to grow ourselves. If we're just kind of staying who we are as a person, our business is kind of is going to flatline. So we need to improve our, ourselves as much as our business. The same thing with our health journey. We might have the greatest intention. This year, I'm going to kick ass with my health. I'm going to maintain my health goals. I'm going to stay on you know, low sugar, uh, keto, whatever my goal might be. But as John Lennon says, life was, is what happens when you're busy making other plans. We think we're going to rock it. We think we're going to kick, kick ass. And then about, it gets cold out in, in February. We're like, Valentine's Day is here. I'm going to treat myself. I'm going to enjoy myself. 
and then for whatever reason, it only lasts till about Valentine's Day, barely St. Patrick's Day, but about five, six weeks in or so, you're like, yeah, this isn't working so well. I'm tired of this. Like, oh, you're going back to your old, old uh, habits. So that's why it's, it's as much of a behavioral change as it is the food change. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, Dr. Zoe said, so true, making it sustainable means you have to get there mentally first. And that's so important. You really want to, instead of being like, oh, I want to be the person that, you know, is healthy. I want to be the person that goes to the gym three days a week. Like you have to start realizing that you are that person, like that it takes, you have to have that mental switch in your head. So, you know, creating specific goals is really important. Making sure you have like a solid why, why do you want to make these goals and dig deep? Like I make my clients go five layers deep in terms of their why, because every time you want to give up, every time you want to go back to these old behaviors, you're going to, I make them pull out their whys. Why did you want to do this in the first place? Well, it might be like, well, I want to lose, you know, I want to lose 30 pounds. Well, why do you want to lose 30 pounds? Well, because I want to fit into my clothes. Well, why is fitting into your old clothes important to you? Well, because I want my husband to, you know, find me attractive again. Well, why is that important to you? Well, because our relationship has been strained because I feel bad about myself and I'm not comfortable, you know, and it's, it's hurt our intimacy. It's, you know, so like digging deep into your why really addresses that mental and emotional aspect of this. So making sure you have solid goals, making sure that you have dig deep on those whys and really get to the root of why you want to make these health changes um, is super important and going to allow you to create these changes that are sustainable, that are long-term because this is a lifestyle. This isn't just a diet. This isn't just, you know, a fitness routine. This isn't just, um, you know, something that is short-term. This is a lifestyle change. Like, you don't want to continue to include these toxic poisonous, you know, foods in your diet. You want to like fuel your body properly. And when you focus on the entire person, that mental, emotional, and spiritual aspect, you begin to have this love for yourself. And that self-love really makes you want to continue to make these healthy changes. You love yourself. So you want to nourish your body. You want to feel good. Um, you know, you don't want to eat these inflammatory foods because you know how that like makes you feel and, and, and how you react to it. So instead of just like being out at an event and, you know, being like, oh, screw it. I'm here. I'm just going to like have all this stuff. You're like, no, I'm good. You know, like, I don't want to eat those foods. I want to enjoy myself and I want to have a good time because I love myself and I don't want to feel like crap later. Um, you know, so really addressing those things is so important. Very well said, and we've, it's like I really appreciate that you said this the five to seven layers deep, which is so important. Many people say they want to get healthy, that's a relative statement. Do you mean you want to improve your uh, immune system? Do you want to lose weight? Do you want to gain weight? Do you want more muscle? What does healthy mean to you? It's a relative statement from person to person. It could also be you want to support your mental and emotional health. So, being healthy can kind of it's a relative, like, hey, it's going to be healthy. But we really have to figure out why. What does health mean to you? Have you done in the past? You know, what is what? How important is it to you to be healthy? Because uh, it's healthy to be healthy next year, six months down the line. So it's really it's supporting the whole person because we we've all been there. Stress happens. We're we're gonna life happens. We're gonna want to go for this the sweet tooth, the cake. You're like screw it, I'm just gonna have this. It doesn't make you a bad person if you do. <laughs> this is what it is. Nature is what it is. Uh, but making sure that, that each decision is what's going to be right for you to make, uh, for, again, for your mental, emotional health and well-being. I miss pizza. I grew up in New Jersey. I miss the greasy pizza. I just don't want to be like drunk afterwards. No, uh, food coma drunk. Uh, so it's really what works for you and the bread and the person. And again, not just giving some uh, so I'm on a menu of things to do and just send you on your way. We are whole, whole people more than anything. And in, my, in the health coaching tra tra uh, training I completed in 2019, uh, it was highly emphasized the importance of primary foods, which is your, your joy, your creativity, your home life, your relationships, uh, your physical touch, hugs, 
your activity, your community and so forth, those are as important as the food you put in your body. Because if we're sitting home or we're lonely, we're not happy, those greens and those kale is, are only going to do so good. So really supporting the whole person is extremely healthy from multiple perspectives. Hold on, I'm going to meet myself real quick. Keep talking. <laughs> no, no worries. So, I, I, from a holistic perspective, I've always come from uh, from a perspective of supporting the whole person, not just the again, not just the food you put in your body, but supporting the whole person, making sure you're staying on track. Because this can be so so easy to. Uh, family event happens whatever happens and you just, you just feel like, yeah, I don't feel like doing this anymore. So you wanna make sure that you're supporting, supporting the whole person, uh, needs, result, needs, desires and so forth. Because if you're doing great, but you're not really satisfied, satisfied in your career or personally, we wanna make sure that all aspects of life are supported, whether it's uh, you know, a family relationship. That's gonna, if you have a bad family relationship, that can have an impact on your health. I actually spoke about this uh, yesterday in a podcast I, re I recorded, and I mentioned it, mentioned it earlier that uh, honoring yourself and your worth is so important because uh, in some family dynamics, it can be really freaking uncomfortable. Just putting that up for now, I can talk more about specifics, but in certain family dynamics, it's just your body turns off because you feel like you're, you're, you're there physically, but you're not there emotionally and accepted. So really supporting the whole person is so, so important. As much as, as important as the diet is, that's only half the equation from my perspective. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I've worked with clients where they're in very high stress jobs, right? And this is affecting their health. So that's something we work on. Like, okay, maybe can you, you know, I have one client and she just got her schedule changed at least, you know, it's still a little bit of a stressful job, but at least she's on a better schedule. So she's able to sleep more regularly. She is, is not being left alone at her job on the weekends and getting as overwhelmed. Um, she has a more regular schedule. I have another client, a very high stress job. Um, and, now she's, you know, we've talked about this and I'm like, you know, this is affecting your healing process. You know, we've done so good with the diet, the mindset, all the other things, but you go to work all day and, you know, it's just creating more stress on your body, which is leading to inflammation. So, you know, she started searching for new jobs. Um, so, you know, when you work with like a holistic health coach or, or, you know, someone like myself or Chris, like, these are the things that we help support you in. We, we work with you to, you know, find these triggers to find these things and, and try to come up with solutions for you. And we don't, you know, ever recommend like, Hey, Oh, your job stressful, just quit. No, like, let's talk about it. Let's, you know, like, let's work together to find some solutions, you know, for you so that you can get to that level of healing that you desire so that you can reach those goals that you desire. I've had clients too, that, you know, unfortunately they have ended relationships, you know, that they've been in because they realize that the person that they're with causes them a lot of stress, um, is not beneficial for their health. And that's something that, you know, I, I won't ever tell anyone, oh yeah, leave your, leave your husband or, you know, leave your wife. Um, but I would, oh, right. Like I, but I will say, you know, okay. So what are the things that, um, you know, are affecting you? How do you think like this person's behavior is affecting your own personal journey and your health goals? And is that person serving you and benefiting you in your life? Or are they holding you back? Are they harming your health? Are they, you know, keeping you from moving forward? So those are all things to, you know, talk about and work on and having support with, you know, a, a holistic, uh, minded individual can really be beneficial in those situations. And it's almost like sometimes we are like therapists, but not like therapists, but we're here to like listen and support and just guide you along and, you know, give you advice and be there 
you know, with you along with the diet and lifestyle changes, but, you know, focusing on healthy relationships is super important. Focusing on, you know, a healthy work-life balance, like is super important. And I think so many people over the last couple of years, you know, with everything that's, you know, gone on have kind of realized like, wow, like, I don't want to go back to that job or I don't want, you know, like, I don't want to continue on this path because it's not good for my health. And so really, you know, focusing on all of those aspects is super important. If you want to become the healthiest version of yourself, you want to show up better in every area of your life. You've got to focus on, and I call them like the four legs of the chair, right? So we have physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health. And uh, I'll let Chris talk and then I'll touch some more on spiritual health after that. Absolutely. And again, we cannot make any claims that if you leave your job, you leave a relationship that, you know, we're going to get rid of a disease. Uh, but if you break disease apart, uh, it means your body's not at ease. So a lot, what a 95% of all diseases might have a, might or probably do have an emotional component. There probably or a stress component to it. So there have been situations where I work with, work with people, and I'm sure Brittany, you have too, where you work with a client and they quit their job again we're not telling you to do do that but they stopped working at a job that was killing their soul killing they might notice that oh wow my stress is gone like i feel lighter now i'm not as heavy and stressed out am i don't have the chest pain that i did when i was working at the job so from an environmental perspective our environment whether it be the, our home life our career life our, our, and so forth can not make or break you, but it can make a big difference uh, from from different capacities. And it's really important to recognize that, oh yeah, like these friends aren't really that good for me or this relationship isn't really that good for me. And whatever it might be, I, I've been there myself. It's like, this is cool, but like, yeah, not really. And then, oh yeah, I'm feeling so much better now. I, and I've been in jobs too that I was literally, we're doing data entry for eight hours a day. And I did not talk to anyone. You guys can see, like, I can talk really well. I love talking and communicating, presenting. So it's like, it was killing my soul. And once I left, it, it wasn't easy like to like lose your income. But I realized that just wasn't good for me physically. And I realized what kind of difference it made, it made for me uh, as far as the environment was concerned. And then it just killed my soul, but my energy was gone. So I, I uh, my energy was gone. My stress levels were all over the place, which actually, because I was so stressed out, it affected my blood sugar levels. I would eat foods that were even like mildly sweet. And because my quarters all was up, I'd have a blood sugar rush and I'd crash. So that can have a really big freaking effect. As much as the food, even if you're eating low glycemic, your stress level can have a big freaking effect on that, uh, on your environment. So it's really important to take note of, again, how you feel in different environments, the people, your career, your relationships. Again, we're not making any claims now to do X, Y, Z or the other, but just to notice it. Like, oh yeah, I feel really good around this person. This person is not that good for, for me. So it's really important to, to recognize that and how that uh, plays an effect. We've, we've worked with people, like you said, and they go back and they realize, oh yeah, this is what this, uh, my father passing away is what caused my stomach to get upset. So I'm like, it wasn't the food I ate, but it was the stress levels that affected it. Just to use that as an example. And I really appreciate appreciate you, uh, the four uh, legs of the chair that you mentioned. And when, one thing I post often in the group, and this is again, more from a holistic perspective, I forget the exact, exact stat, but having a purpose in our life is so freaking important and excuse my language uh but if we don't have a purpose to wake up in the morning and it's not just a pee that's because besides <laughs> but if we don't have a, a purpose to get up and to want to act to want to do good for ourselves support ourselves in different capacities purpose having a purpose again is so important and they, there's even the stat of after people retire like they're so used to working in a job getting off going to their, to their job it's like 18 months or so after retiring it's kind of the set point of like, oh yeah, I don't have anything to do anymore. So you need to have a second thing to do, hobby and so forth, just to use that example. So having a purpose is so important from many perspectives. And even from an emotional perspective, if you're feeling down, you're like depressed and anxious, 
having a purpose is going to keep you going. It's so much from many capacity. It could be for me, it's like my nephew and my niece and fulfilling my, my passion, my purpose as well. But having a purpose as well to kind of recognize that when you're in your, your uh, hardest times, having a purpose, oh yeah, my nephew and my niece need you. People like Brittany are amazing, uh, great friends, great people to connect with. So it's like, these people need me. I need to, this is my purpose. I think really think that's important to recognize from a holistic perspective. Yeah, absolutely. Nikki says, I worked in big pharma for way too long before becoming a nutritionist. <laughs> I totally relate to soul crushing job. Um, yeah, I can imagine uh, that would uh, definitely be <laughs> very out of alignment um, for me. And I <laughs> very yeah. soul crushed um as well totally. but to talk about you know passion and purpose and the spiritual aspect um at my church the last um several weeks we've been doing a series on purpose and one of the things that they uh, said which I really liked was you know your passion is for you but your purpose is for others sometimes they're the same sometimes they're different right and so we all have a god-given purpose and it's really important to get back into alignment with our spiritual health. We are spiritual beings and whether you're a Christian or, you know, some other faith or whether you, you know, don't believe really in anything at all, um, connecting with something greater than yourself, uh, can be very beneficial, you know, for your health, whether you want to call it God, creator, divine, uh, whatever that is to you, it's extremely important to have that connection um, for your health and realize that we are all here for a purpose. And it's not just about going to work and punching a clock and just surviving and just, you know, living. And that's kind of, you know, what our society has created and it, <clears throat> excuse me, and it's caused a lot of stress for people, um, you know, being really out of alignment with that and not feeling like they have this, this purpose and not being passionate about their jobs and, um, you know, it really affects our emotional health, our mental health, our physical health when we're not in alignment with, with our spirit. Um, and it can create all sorts of, you know, physical issues. Like Chris said, you know, dis, dis ease, right? Like our body is not at ease. And so we have to have all four legs of the chair. Otherwise we're, you know, like we're wobbly. Um, so it, you know, it comes down to, yes, we need to nourish our body with, with good foods, good, healthy foods. We need to, um, you know, get movement in every day. We need to exercise. We need to, um, you know, move our bodies, move that static energy uh as well we need to you know focus on our mental health do things that you know um make us happy spend time with people that we love um you know uh read books learn grow um do all those kind of things learn to manage our emotions be okay sometimes with not being okay um you know we don't always have to be happy and joyful all the time it's all right to like feel emotions. And I think, you know, people nowadays, you know, what's very like popular in our, in our culture is like this sense of like, well, that makes me uncomfortable. So you can't do that, you know, like, and it's like, well, you know, that's, that's okay that you're uncomfortable. It, it shouldn't affect, you know, what other people do and say, um, but you need to be able to like sit with that emotion, right. And understand it because, if we don't have emotional health, you know, and we just go off the rails, if somebody says something that offends us, which is, you know, everything nowadays, it seems like, especially with the younger, you know, generation, everything's so offensive. And, you know, you have to understand, like, you can control you, you can't control other people, um, you know, so not being okay with something that someone says is fine. Um, but like sit with that emotion and be like, okay, like I didn't like the way this was, this is how it made me feel. Um, but I'm going to move on from that, you know, I'm going to move on from that feeling and some of the things that, you know, um, can really help are things like meditation, um, you know, uh, theta healing, Reiki, energy work, um, all of these things to move kind of some of this like negative energy really like get to, you know, know yourself and really understand yourself and, and truly heal on a level because we've all been through stuff. 
Um, you know, we all have our own traumas. Nobody's life is perfect. Even super wealthy, amazing, you know, people that we look up to, like we've all had our own stuff. Um, but just really like looking back at that and like how that affected us and seeing the good in that can really benefit our emotional health. Um, you know, growing up, like I had an addict dad, right? Like I had a lot of trauma that I've had to heal, um, you know, from that. And, but looking back on it now, even though I was super angry about it for so long, um, you know, why did this happen to me? This isn't fair. Like, why can't I just have a normal life, a normal, you know, family, all these things, but that wasn't serving me. So I really had to, you know, get to the bottom of that, heal that for my own emotional and mental wellness and just understand that, okay, why did this happen? How did that affect me? How did that change my life? And now I have gratitude for it because you know what? It made me really strong. It made me be able to learn things about myself. It made me, you know, realize the life that I didn't want to live, right? Um, you know, so looking on situations like that and just shifting that mindset of how, what was the purpose of that situation, that negative situation for, you know, um, or that negative person? Like, what did that teach me? Uh, what did I learn from that? How did I grow as a person so that you can then have gratitude for that and release it and let it go. And we have to learn to like sit with those emotions. Like if, if there was no sadness, we wouldn't know what happiness was. So there's a positive and negative to everything. And it's okay to have those negative emotions. Sometimes, you know, it's how we work through those and how we deal with those and how we learn to appreciate those and show them gratitude. That's how we release it and let it go. And we learn and grow as a, as a person and we become better every day. Very well said. I truly appreciate that. And just kind of reminds me of the, uh, the phrase, the yin, to, the yin to the yang the good to the bad and so forth. It's so, so important. And you and I were just on a very interesting uh, workshop with Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi. One thing that I've heard before and it sticks out, turn your mess into your message. Mm -hmm. What was your story? What happened? Whether it was a parent situation, I have one myself too. I've spoken about it. I'm speaking about it more and more. But we all are. It feels cathartic, cathartic to do. But that's going back to my my purpose, my passion, and like I have spoken about as well, uh, the having a honoring your worth, honoring because if you're not feeling worthy, it's going to affect your emotions. You're going to come down, which is also going to affect your serotonin, uh, your dopamine levels, and everything else. You're not going to have any any energy, so it's going to and that it's in of itself is going to affect your uh, chemistry, your physi physiology and chemistry in your body. Which is going to affect your your gut health because your gut's not your gut is not able to digest. So <laughs> we're kind of preaching to the choir here, but it's uh, we don't we do not mean to overwhelm people. But to get to the point of we can recommend a probiotic to you, or digestive enzyme, whatever it is. But we need to help support the whole person because those and that enzyme and a probiotic will maybe help for a couple of days. But if you're still stressed out and your your gut is off, you're still going to be off even if you choose the probiotics so we need to really support the whole person and again listen to your listen to your body if you feel uh, a lot of times physical manifestations in the body such as you know, uh, tension in your neck or shoulders might mean that uh, you have the weight of the world on your shoulders so are you stressed out is it because you worked out which would be great this is great too but are you also stressed out because you're because of stress you have a heartache uh it's true. You pull your on your heartstrings, and that literally can cause a heart attack for someone to die. Not gonna make any claims, but it's it's true. Or the other, uh, I believe, liver is fear, kidney is fear, liver, liver might be anger liver and resentment. Yeah. Okay, so it all works together, like I said. So it's the love, uh, grief. Right. Exactly. Uh, head head is tension, sinus, and so forth as well, probably. So it all works together, like I said. So, so when working with a coach, such as Brittany, myself, any other people in the group, that's the, the benefit of working with someone like us is we're not just going to give you some food. So like, here, take these three supplements on your way. We're going to have a, our talk is going to be about you, not just about the broccoli you're eating or the kale you're eating. 
or the beans or whatever it might be. It's about as much you as it is those. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my client intake, um, you know, I do a deep dive into health and diet history, but then we also start talking about, you know, what happened in your childhood? When did these, you know, when did these symptoms start occurring? Was there something that happened before that? Like, because these emotions can play a huge role in our symptoms when it comes to our health. And Marty says here, I find sitting with the emotion helps it to move through more quickly. And I absolutely agree, um, you know, Marty, like you have to sit with it. You have to like understand it and then you can let it go instead of just letting it like eat you, you know, eat you alive. And, and you're just like thinking about it constantly. If you just like be mindful and you take a moment you can really, you know, just work through that. Okay. What, what was this trying to teach me? Everything happens for a reason, good and bad. And there's going to be bad in all of our lives. Like it just, it just happens. Um, but you know, in, in, in my belief, like God works all things towards good. So now with all of that stuff, you know, all the bad things that happened to me in my life, as I've gone through this whole journey, which started with just diet and lifestyle and, you know, going to the gym and, but then it became, you know, I started to dive deeper into all of those things and that mental and emotional health. And now I realize that like all of these things help me get to where I am today. Right. So that I can fulfill my purpose of helping others, you know, improve their health on every level you know, which also happens to be my passion, which is great. Cause like I said, your passion doesn't necessarily have to be your purpose. Um, but we all have a purpose. We've got to focus on holistic health. Um, you know, diet and exercise are great, but there's so much more to being a healthy person, um, than just eating organic and going to the gym five days a week. Uh, we've got another question here. Um, cool. Tisha says, I have gastroparesis. What would be the best thing for it? You know, Tisha, that really depends on what's going on. What is the cause? I would definitely have to do like a deep dive health history. I would need a whole lot more information to give you better clarity, um, you know, on that. There are some, there could be nerve damage. There could, I mean, there could be a number of things um, that's going on with that, that I would need a lot more information on to give you um, to give you an answer on that, um, Tisha and Marty says, uh, we have those phrases for a reason, Chris. So true. Absolutely. What does she say? Uh, we have those phrases for a reason, Chris. So yeah, true. totally. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. It's, absolutely. It, it's, it's so true. It's so cool to see everyone, uh, everyone on, on a Wednesday afternoon, because it's Brittany and I can talk about gluten health every week, but we don't want to or you guys, and that's really important to us. It's our lifestyle in a sense, this is what we do. Um, but this is as important as that uh, from many perspectives like we've em emphasized today. So to really uh, emphasize the importance of the whole person, like we've said, the spiritual side, the emotional side, uh, how different events in our life affect us. Uh, if we're not, if we're not happy again, we're not, if we're not happy, we're not gonna have a desire to get up the couch and take our supplements. So those supplements are not going to do any good on your on your counter or that lettuce or your kale or whatever greens you're having. So it's so important to really work on the, the whole person as much as uh, the food itself. Yeah. Um, Tisha says, for some reason, I cannot process things when I know what's going on. I may shed a tear or two and then move on. And I know that's not good for me. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that could be contributing not dealing with those emotions, not handling those emotions could definitely be contributing to your gastroparesis. Um, you know, so there could be some diet and lifestyle things that you need to be doing. There could be, you know, things that could help you could be like some, um, you know, vagal nerve toning, um, you know, different exercises, dietary changes, some supplements and things, but you've got to address that emotional aspect of it. So if you're not, you know, processing emotions fully there could be something you know like you're stuck right you're stuck so then your gastrointestinal system is getting stuck it's not moving because you're not moving through these emotions so it plays an important role um you know if this is something Tisha that you want to talk more about feel free to private message me and you know we can discuss this uh you know more in depth um but I'll just like pull up one of the things um 
you know, like a feeling of doom or a feeling of like not moving forward. Um, I have a great book that has emotions, you know, and, and related to, um, you know, physical, physical symptoms, uh, highly recommend, uh, this book from Louise Hay, uh, really, really good, really, really good book. Um, but yeah, awesome book. feel free to I message me, Tisha, and we can, we can talk further. Brittany's a great, great resource when it comes to gut health uh, and supporting the whole person in addition to gut health. So I really, uh, Give you credit to Shiv for just putting yourself out there and sharing your goals and suggestions public with with that. And I do highly recommend you reach out to Brittany for that. She can help support you with the food in addition to you as a person. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh, you're welcome, Nikki. Yeah, this book is amazing. When I start reading my clients, like the emotions behind like their symptoms, I'm like, does this resonate right. with you? And like nine times out of ten, they're like, oh my God, like that's me. <laughs> And some of the issues that I had had previously, I was, you know, looking in this book and I was like, oh yeah, yep. And then it also has affirmations though, too. Um, so you can, you know, have these affirmations to help you, you know, move past, um, you know, these feelings that we've had, these, um, you know, thoughts that we've had, these beliefs that we've had in order to help with this dis-ease, right? Absolutely. Thank you. This is more important to me, actually. You cut out a little bit there, Chris. I didn't quite catch that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was just mentioned that this is as important to me, this this topic, as the foods. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you have to look at the entire person. You, you you have to then this is why when I first started coaching I was like what is the missing piece here and as I you know continue to go on my healing journey and you know work with you know theta healers and doing the biofeedback and um you know hypnotherapy and all these things and uncovering all these like old wounds I started to realize I'm like oh that's what it is it's the missing piece it's um you know connecting the the physical health with the mental health with the spiritual health with the emotional health it's it's really a four-legged chair and when one leg is missing <laughs> you're like this and you can't you're not gonna become fully healthy you know so oh i think i lost chris M must have lost him but i think it was about um time to end anyways uh yeah nikki firm believer in affirmations and positive self-talk 100 percent. what we put out there is what we get back um so having that positive um you know mindset and just knowing like hey my body has the ability to heal um i know that i can heal I am healing, you know, writing that down, saying those things out loud, like good things are coming my way. That's one of the, one of my favorite ones that I say every day. Um, you know, uh, things, you know, things that are supposed to be in my life flow to me. Um, my body is healing all, all of these things, like they're super important. So thank you guys so much, uh, for contributing. Thank you so much. If you guys have any questions, as always, feel free to reach out to me and Chris. If you're watching the replay, um, you can leave any questions in the chat and, um, we will talk to you guys soon. Hope you guys all have a wonderful rest of your week. Take care.